sallallahu wasallam who would extend his sajda for a child on his back and who would hasten his prayer in leadership on the on on the mat of imama when he heard the crying of a child sallallahu alaihi wasallam right if the young are not welcomed in in the masjids then uh, our future is not going to be in the masjids it's not going to be in the houses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's exactly what it's, it's it's a real shameful situation that we have monumental structures of masajid up and down this country even being built to this day for millions of pounds but how much space do the young have in those masjids you know you must have seen that post that the ottomans used to have written in their masjids that if you don't have children praying playing at the back of your masjid whilst you're praying then you've got a very dim future ahead of you and your masjids have got a very dim future ahead of them that they're going to be empty they think that you know the children are going to disturb their prayers your prayers are disturbed anyway seriously you you got disturbed minds those who think children will disturb their relationship with allah they've got disturbed minds do you know why because they should be thinking allah's going to accept my prayer because of this child You know in Damascus they used to make a dua Allahumma lawla ash-shuyukh ar-ruk'a wal wal atfal ar-rudda oh Allah if it wasn't because of these old men with crooked backs and if it wasn't because of these breastfeeding children you wouldn't accept our dua the people don't know the messenger of Allah carried sayyida umama in prayer in front of his companions in his masjid and he's the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayyidina umar left his member picked up the grandchildren and he placed them upon his member and he continued his khutbah amirul mu'minin and now we have such righteous jahils in our masjids thinking that if children come around our prayer our prayers will be invalid those millions are not needed in brick and mortar no more they needed in in the people that we're losing right we've got enough beautiful monumental structural masjids but the problem is that nobody's welcome children are not welcome young people are not welcome and there's no space for women put a full stop to that you know i was delivering a class once and and and, and a group of sisters complained that we don't have anywhere in our local areas or in our city where we can take our children in, in the evening to the masjid and just sit with them in comfort in the comfort of the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i said to them i don't have it in my city too so you know i'm not the person to complain to i i've got the same complaint too and it's a serious issue it's a very very serious issue the masjid of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was open to the women the sahabiyat radiyallahu anhunna other than maghrib and isha they used to pray in the masjid of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right but our masajid don't have space and if there's space for them they're not welcome uh, a young lady who came to the masjid and she had a, a young child with her and you know children of course going to run around they run around the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't have an issue your prayers are so pious The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never had an issue. He carried Sayyida Umama radiyallahu anha in his hands whilst he was leading the Sahaba in prayer. The daughter of Sayyida Zainab, he carried her in prayer. And when he went to sajda, he put her down, and when he stood up, he carried her whilst praying. I took my son once to the masjid, yeah, and he was standing next to me, and the guy on the other side said, "Does this kid have a nappy on?" I seriously looked at the guy and I was going to say do you have an apion <laughs> until women and children are not welcomed into the houses of Allah we we're not going to have a future in the masjids we already don't have it we don't have a present in the masjids let alone a future you know people who have a present can think about the future people who don't have a present they've got no future to think about and that's our situation we have no future to think about because we don't have a present the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's masjid had women praying it don't you know that i'm sure you guys have heard that the the women sahaba sahabiyat radiyallahu anhum used to attend the masjid and they used to come and speak to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ask him questions so much so that sayyida aisha who was originally from makkah she's a makkan woman right she was surprised at the questions of these women of medina what did she say she said rahimallahu nisa al ansar 
لم يمنعهن الحياء من أن يتفقهن في دينهن Allah have mercy upon the women of the Ansar the women of Medina shyness did not prevent them from studying their religion why? because the Prophet welcomed their questions and answered their questions women are not even allowed in and some masses don't even have women areas you know most masses are not women safe but most and, and they're not women friendly and some don't even have a place for women to come into the house of Allah is that a masjid you're building upon the design of the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ or somebody else's it doesn't make sense and the Prophet Wasallam's children used to play in the masjid and the Sahaba radiallahu anhu used to see them come into the masjid and play the Prophet ﷺ never stopped a child from playing in the masjid never no child could ever disturb the Prophet's prayer even if they were playing clinging on to him jumping on his back they jumped on his back and it didn't disturb his prayer it just gave him a, an excuse to stay with his Lord for longer if he had the cry of a child the Sahaba said messenger of Allah you hasten the prayer he said I heard the cry of a child and I feared that the mother of that child who was praying in the masjid who was praying in the masjid who was praying in the masjid behind the Prophet ﷺ, will be put into fitna so I hasten my prayer so the mother can go back home and attend to her child the Prophet ﷺ, when he stood in prayer even though his heart was connected unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in his presence that didn't mean his ears were not listening into what was happening around him he heard the cry of a child and when he would finish his prayer and turn to his companions, do you know what he used to say to them?